Ayam Vishnu Pad Karma Hamsa Bhavakacharya Asata Sata Shishama is divine grace. AC Bhaktivedanta Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai. Is Kambi BT founder Acharya Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jayam Vishnu Pad Karma Hamsa Bhavakacharya Asata Sata Shishama is divine grace. Bhaktivedanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai, Namacharya Shiva Dasta Kaur Ki Jai, Prem Se Bahog, Sri Krishna Se Tanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Siddhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shama Kun Radha Kun Giriga Ki Jai, Sri Mayapodam Ki Jai, Sri Vrindavindam Ki Jai, Ganga Maya Ki Jai, Yamuna Maya Ki Jai, Tausi Devi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Sama Veta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Gauda Pramananda, Hari Hari Bhog, All Glories to the Assembled Bhutis, All Glories to the Assembled Bhutis, All Glories to the Assembled Bhutis. All glories to Shishi Guru and Goranga. So I'd like to welcome everybody to this Sunday evening's Bhagavad Gita class. Uh, we will do the uh, auspicious um, prayers before beginning. Ungena Timaranda Shaganagana Salakaya. Tak so many Tamiena ties my she get away in Maha. She say Tanya Mano be stam, stop his Tamiena brutally. Swine Ruba, Gara Mayam, the Nati Swap and Pikam. Vandi Ham, she guru, she Uta Parakamam, she guru, vice Napam Chai. She you come Sabaja Tam, Sahagana, Raguna Tampi Tams, Tam Sajivam. Sabadwaitam, Sabadutam, Parijana say Tam, Krishna say Tanya Devam. Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamis Cha. E Krishna Kuna Sindhu, Dina Bandu Jagapate, Gopesha Gopi Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostate, Tapta Kanchana Gorangi, Radi Vindavaneshwari, Vishubano Sutta Devi, Panamami Hari Priye, Vanta Kavis to Rubis Cha, Kripa Sindhu, Eva Cha, Patita Nam Pavane, Bio Vaishnavio Namaha. Shri Krishna Saitanya Pavuna Chananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhara Shri Vasudhi Gaurabhaka Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Ram Hare Hare So we're reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is. And we're in chapter six. We're coming to almost to the end of the chapter. We're on um, text 42. And the title of the chapter is Gyan Yoga. So I'd like to ask the blessings of all whatever senior devotees who are present and all devotees, if you would give your blessings that I can just be a parrot and repeat what the acharyas have given us and share whatever realizations I may have. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So text 42, the verse. Atava yoginam eva kule bhavati dimatam etadi dulabhataram loke janma yadijisham Atava yoginam eva kule bhavati dimatam etadi dulabhataram Loke janma yari trisham Atava yoginam eva Kule bhavati dimatam Itadi dula bhataram Loke janma yari trisham So the word for word 
atava or yoginam of learned transcendentalists eva certainly kule in the family bhavati takes birth dimatam of those who are endowed with great wisdom etat this he certainly dulava taram very rare loke in this world janma birth yat that which idrisam like this or if unsuccessful after long practice of yoga, he takes his birth in a family of transcendentalists who are surely great in wisdom. Certainly such a birth is rare in this world. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Srila Prabhupada. Birth in a family of yogis or transcendentalists those with great wisdom is praised herein because the child is born in such a family, because the child born in such a family receives a spiritual impetus from the very beginning of his life. It is especially the case in the Acharya or Goswami families. Such families are very learned and devoted by tradition and training, and thus they become spiritual masters. In India, there are many such Acharya families, but they have now degenerated due to insufficient education and training. By the grace of the Lord, there are still families that foster transcendentalist generation after generation. It is certainly very fortunate to take birth in such families. Fortunately, both our spiritual master Om Vishnu Pad, Sri Shamad, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, and our humble self had the opportunity to take birth in such families by the grace of the Lord. And both of us were trained in the devotional service of the Lord from the very beginning of our lives. Later on, we met by the order of the transcendental system. So, um, Text 41 and 42 um, are, you know, together in how they talk about the unsuccessful yogis because there's two unsuccessful yogis. So we'll just do a little bit of review um, dealing with the, um, Arjuna's questions about the destination of an unsuccessful yogi. So his question, well, first, let's go further back because um, in text 33, 34, and, uh, Krishna, and Krishna talks to Arjuna about the, the being able to control the mind and um, uh, in text 33 and 34, he talks about the restlessness of the mind in the yoga system. And he was explaining, you know, like trying to control the mind was, was very, very difficult. Um, but Krishna says that it could be done by a suitable practice and by detachment. So then in, the, in text 37, that's when Krishna, when Arjuna asked the question about what's the destination of the transcendentalist who takes to the process but later deviates you know, because of you know, some worldly mindedness or some other difficulties in the process. And then he further asks um, in here, Does not such a man who is bewildered from the path of transcendence fall away from both spiritual and material success and perish like a riven cloud with no position in any sphere? So this word riven cloud, it's like you can compare it to a big cloud in the sky. And sometimes you see that the clouds break up, small particles or small um, parts of the cloud break away. So what happens to that cloud that has gone away from the big cloud? So eventually what happens to it, it disappears. So 
It has no position in the sky at all because it's disappeared. So this is, you know, part of the second part of the question that um, Arjuna is asking. And he's, he's wanting, you know, Krishna to, to help him with this doubt. You know, he wants it completely dispelled, you know, so he can move on. And then he also says that, you know, except for Krishna, who else can destroy this doubt, you know? And uh, Krishna, because Arjuna has accepted Krishna as his spiritual master, so we have the same relationship with our spiritual master. You know, if we have doubts, we should go and, you know, this um, question, present whatever doubts and questions we have. And actually, I was listening to a class where someone was saying, the Bodhi was saying that if we, we have to give the spiritual master the confidence to, to instruct us because the spiritual master doesn't, you know, want to like impose on us if we're not willing to open ourselves and submit to him and give him that, that go ahead to, to instruct us. So we, we need to really be submissive and be willing to, to ask the questions that, that that's why he's there to ask the questions that are maybe giving us some problems and, and be open and trusting that the spiritual master has our best um, welfare in mind. And then after he gives the instruction, we should be willing to follow it. Once we ask, you know, the question, whatever instruction he gives us, we should be willing to accept it. So um, as we move on, we're coming to, you know, the 41 and 42. But what I wanted to talk about before we get into that is I wanted us to look at some of, some of the pitfalls, some of the reasons why, you know, transcendentalists fall away from this path. Um, and we can see, you know, that um, it's happened a lot. So we'd like to look at some of the reasons. We need to know some of the reasons and also understand how powerful and strong is Maya. She's, I mean, she's, she's a general in Krishna's army and she's doing her service to the max, to her best ability to help keep purity in the, in the intentions of us trying to approach Krishna. So, um, so we're trying to, you know, pursue this transcendental path. And one thing is it's very difficult for this age in Kali Yuga, it's very difficult. We can see, you know, compared to the population of the world, how many devotees are taking to this process of trying to understand the Supreme Person of Godhead. So we're declaring war. We've decided, you know, okay, I want to follow this path. So in, you know, we, we know that in uh, Bhagavad Gita 714, it is said that Daivi Yeesha Gunamai, Mama Maya Duradyaya, Mam Eva Yepupadiante, Mayam Eva Taranti Te. This divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature are difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. So in order to get away from the clutches of Maya, I mean, she's not looking at persons who are already in illusion, who are already in the material energy, who are thinking they're enjoying, or those who are in the prison. Okay, so this material was in prison. So she's not looking at those people who are already in illusion and thinking they're enjoying themselves, thinking they're not suffering. But the minute, you know, the transcendentalists, all of us decide, okay, we, we don't want to be in illusion anymore. We want to follow this path to get out of the material world. So she focuses her attention on us, you know, the ones who are trying to escape the prison. 
you know, like, okay, you can take the example of a of, of, of regular, like a prison, you know, in the world. And you can have those prisoners who are quite comfortable. They make their cell very nice. They, you know, fix it up. They have their literature, their books, and they do exercise, but they're totally comfortable. But then you may have those ones, prisoners who are in their mind find, planning an escape or trying to get away. So the warden, you know, is aware of this. So he's paying attention to this person who I know has a plan to try to get away. So uh, my gumar used to call it, we're trying to make the great escape. We're trying to get out of this material world. Mikuloka, we're trying to get away. So she's, you know, totally focused on us. So, and we're vulnerable. We're vulnerable. And uh, so because of that vulnerability, and it's also because we've been in this material world for so long, for millions of births, and have become acclimated to, to being here. So the step that the transcendentalists are taking is, you know, has gotten the attention of Maya. So that's why we have some casualties. We are on the battlefield. And actually the beginning, in the beginning of the Gita, being on the battlefield is perfect because we are on the battlefield of consciousness. We are on this battlefield. And we can see that sometimes if we look to the right or we look to the left, we see some soldiers have fallen away or have gotten wounded in this, this path you know, of declaring war on Maya. And when you declare war on Maya, you have to be prepared for the attacks. And they can be gross. I mean, once we come away from, you know, some of the gross desires, then what happens is then the, the subtle desires come up and we have to be aware of those as well. So, um, so we're gonna look at some of the reasons before we get to the, you know, where does the unsuccessful yogi go? We'll talk a little bit about, you know, what are some of the pitfalls that happen you know, to transcendentalists who want to escape from this, this material world? So um, the first, uh, I, I was listening to a class and the, the, the devotee outlined some of them and I'd like to share them with you. This is uh, in the mood of just repeating what I've heard. And also some, I, some of my own experiences as I try to um, do this process, move through this process on going back home, back to Godhead. So one may be that um, the commitment to Krishna consciousness, you know, might not be very strong. Some sometimes people are not very, very strong in it, you know. Um, we know in general in the material world, sometimes we'll take up something like we'll take up, uh, we'll go to a fitness program or we'll do a program for fitness, or we'll take up some musical instrument and decide, oh, maybe I want to learn how to practice the piano or Maybe I want to learn how to play the guitar or let me go here and do this plan because I need to lose weight. But sometimes we see that after a while we fall away from, from doing those practices and we want to move on to something else. So sometimes the commitment to the process is weak. It's not there, you know. So it's that way they kind of move away because in the beginning, one of the things is uh, in the beginning of the practice, we are very enthusiastic, we're very happy. But then after some time, after longevity, the real test comes. Now, okay, so you, you had some happiness in the beginning, you were glad to find the process, you know, you were excited about it. And after some time, you may, begin to understand the difficulties involved and the, uh, the rigors of the practice. So then you 
you know, you may, you know, those who are not totally committed may move away. Because as you're in it, you find out that you have to be determined. There are so many, you know, pitfalls. You have to be determined. You have to be surrendered to the spiritual master. You have to surrender to, to Krishna. We have to surrender to the process. Um, so the, that's one is commitment. You know, the mind is very fickle. So that's why I discussed a little bit, but but Krishna discusses early in the chapter about the mind. He prefaces you know, the, the further discussions about the transcendence with, with talking about the mind and how the mind can be your best friend or your worst enemy. And we know, we know that, I'm sure all of us know what happens when the mind gives you difficulties or you're trying to chant and you have to keep bringing it back because the mind wants to do something else. So I'm sure we're all experienced in that. And then um, the next one would be like, not really understanding the true nature of spirituality and what, what that means, you know. We want to have pleasure first and feelings first. But as I was saying before, but we don't understand, you know, the duties and the rigors of the practice and the price that has to be paid. There's a price for everything. And people in the mental world are willing to pay any kind of price to reach their ambitions, no matter what it is. They'll do anything because they are focused on something that they want and this is material. So they're willing to pay the price. They're willing to work 14 hours a day, 12 hours a day. They're willing to you know, give up so many things. They make a trade-off. I know I want this result, so I have to sacrifice this. So those materialists are willing, you know. So as in the material world, in the spiritual realm, in the in our quest, you know, for for going back to Godhead for understanding Krishna, for understanding his process, there's a price to be paid. So that's another reason they don't have that determination to pay the price that has to be paid to understand what the duty is and the rigors of this you know, process. And then the, the next one that uh, we can talk about is no real fear of Maya, not understanding her tempting allurements. And it's because of our long sojourn in this world, which makes us vulnerable to Maya's allurements because we've been doing it for so long. So she's like our tutor and she's giving us all these tests and because she knows all your weak spots, you cannot hide them from her. She knows exactly where you're weak. And some may succumb to that weakness. You know? She's sending you know, different temptations. And as I said before, she's especially giving her attention to those who are trying to escape the prison. So then uh, the next one we can look at is um, improper practice. Practice is rigorous. And if our practice is, you know, not strong, um, if we're not chanting with, trying to chant with vigor and enthusiasm and trying to hear the mantra and really dedicated to, to just focusing on the rounds and not getting distracted in any kind of way, just focusing on, let me chant my 16 rounds. Then, you know, and then, you know, we, we, we become weak in, in Sambandagayan. And, uh, you know, and so Abhideya, the practice becomes weak. 
And then of course we have uh, offenses. We commit offenses, you know, so many. And, and we, we don't have to talk about all the offenses because we know what all the offenses are because, you know, we, in, in a lot of temples, we say them every morning about, you know, what the offenses are in terms of the offenses to the devotees, the offenses to the guru, the offenses to the holy dom, the offenses in the service. So there are so many offenses that may take us away from the process. And then we have um, philosophical deviations. You know, sometimes mm, we may concoct our own version of the philosophy and uh, not follow the parampara, or you know, we we may there may be propagating our own philosophy to live by. We take, you know, some of it, but we don't take all of it. And we decide, okay, um, this is what I believe, or this is, you know, this is, you know, what, what I want to really uh, believe in. So, um, also, person then we may there may be persons who are naive so this naivety is um someone who's in the process but they don't really understand the dangers you know inherent in trying to follow the process they don't really understand like for instance um i was thinking of um when the devotees when Prabhupada came to vrindavan and brought the devotees with him um, he cautioned them about going to to other other gurus or hearing other, you know, um, lectures from from uh, other gurus who who are in Vrindavan. He was trying to protect his his fledglings, his new fledglings, who were new to this process and new to Vrindavan, who could get sidetracked by hearing something other than what Srila Prabhupada had given. And we know that we've heard that sometimes the discussion is Prabhupada didn't give us everything, but Prabhupada gave us everything. He gave us everything, you know? So this is a deviation, you know, to say that he didn't give us everything because he did. He gave us everything. So, and there, there may be other reasons as well. You no, know, um, but those are just, you know, some, some of the, you know, some of the you know, more prominent ones, but there are other, other reasons that may be there as well. So we just need to understand that. And also we need to, understand, you know, those devotees who may have gone away from the process and understand why they've gone away and, you know, be compassionate towards them and pray that they, you know, come back to the path. So, um, So in the text 41, I'll just talk a little bit about this one before I go on to the one that's assigned to me. So in this, he talks about the two classes, you know, one who falls after very little progress and then one who is falling after long process. And um, there are others in our scriptures who we can see also fell. There are examples like uh, Vishwamrita who fell even though he was um, a very austere yogi and had been doing practices for, I don't know, many thousands of years, but yet he fell prey to Manika. You know? um, and we can also look at someone as great as um, Jad Bharat who 
was at the stage of Baba and fell prey, you know, to um, neglecting his practices because of a deer. So these are all great personalities. You know, what to speak of us, you know? Um, he, he got born in the body of a deer. So we also have to be very, very cautious and be afraid of Maya. And always, even Prabhupada prayed not to let himself fall into Maya. Prabhupada prayed that. And he was totally, he had no material desires. He was totally dedicated to his spiritual master. He was totally dedicated to fulfilling the order of Lord Chaitanya. But yet, in his humbleness, he prayed that he not fall from the path. And so we also need to pray all the time to keep ourselves in prayer, to protect us, to be strong in our sadhana, to, to be protected against the allurement, which Maya will certainly try to tempt us with. So here it's saying, um, it says, but those who do not persevere to such an extent who don't fail because of material elements are allowed by the grace of the Lord to make full utilization of their material propensities. And just see, you know, how kind the Lord is. He'll give you, you know, your desires. He'll make sure. He say, he's saying this, uh, in this um, verse here, the previous verse, by the grace of the Lord, and all of it is by the grace of the Lord. Whether it looks good or bad, it's all by the grace of the Lord. So then after that, they are given opportunities to live prosperous lives in righteous or aristocratic families. So in the righteous families, at least they can learn religious practices. Um, I can't say that I'm in that category at all you know, being advanced at all. But I can say that my, my family was, my father was very, very religious, very um, righteous and always had us read the Bible all the time and memorize uh, the, the Psalms and, you know, ask us about the stories and always made sure we knew because he, he, he was, um, he grew up that way himself, you know, going to church all the time. So that's what he wanted for us. So, you know, so it says here to live prosperous lives in righteous or aristocratic families. And, um, so in the in the, they get facilitation for these religious practices, especially if they're aristocratic families, and they get training, you know, in that family. So in forty two, it is saying that one is, um, or if unsuccessful after long practice of yoga, he takes his birth in a famous transcendentalist who is surely great in wisdom. Certainly such a birth is rare in this world. So, uh, birth in a family of yogis or transcendentalists, those with great wisdom is praised herein. Because a child born in such a family receives a spiritual impetus from the very beginning of his life. So we can look at those uh, children who are born in this movement who were most likely yogis in their last life and they only have, you know, um, to finish, you know, what they started. And so they're born in, you know, the devotees' family. So what a huge responsibility for the parents of those children. 
and the parents, you know, are taking on a great responsibility to try to make sure that the child goes back home, back to Godhead and give them this practice and help them from the very beginning of their lives and give them training and education on this process because that is the responsibility of those parents who have brought this child into the world. And it's about uh, this, this responsibility. That's why sex life, as Krishna says, is, is him. And so pro procreation is to bring those children to finish, to complete you know, what they started. And so those children, they begin where they left off in this practice. And so the, all the ISKCON children are very, very special. They're very special children who have come through this movement. And so we should see them as a soul who has come in my care. I, I'm here to take care of them. You know, they are God's children. They belong to Krishna. And you've been given the responsibility you know, to help move them on. And to talk about Srila Prabhupada. So we know by Srila Prabhupada, his life. Well, at first he was talking about uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, his life. We can see what his life was like, how his mother brought him before the cart, Lord Jagannath's cart, and the garland fell on. And his father prayed for a ray of Vishnu you know, to help propagate this movement. So he, you know, was a, a very, very special, very, very elevated soul who came through an elevated family. And then, you know, Srila Prabhupada, we know that uh, from the very beginning of his life, Srila Prabhupada was pampered by his father. And he, you know, like, wanted, he, he was asking his father, you know, if he could do Rati Acha, you know, so where would this come from, this desire to do Rati Acha, you know, because he was a great soul and he came through, you know, um, his, his father, that's why his father knew, you know, he gave him everything, he brought, he even gave him some deities, he brought him some deities so he could, you know, learn how to worship the deities, you know. So we can see, you know, through 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 Prabhupada and through Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj, you know, how they came into a family that helped them, you know, push on their mission when they came to this world, and then uh, so this uh, and how Sri Papa met his his spiritual master because here in the last sentence he says later on we met by the order. His spiritual master and he met by the order of the transcendental system. So what is that transcendental system? That is known by Krishna, you know, because, um, because gurus had been, uh, his father had been hosting sadhus all uh, Prabhupada's life, but Prabhupada could see that some of them weren't, weren't so, so, um, you know, they had certain habits that Prabhupada saw and he felt like they weren't all sincere. So that formed his, his, his opinion. But then his friend, I think his friend was Narendra. I can't remember his name. He was trying to convince you, Prabhupada, no, you have to meet him. So please come, he's different. So finally, Srila Prabhupada capitulated and, and went. So this was all the arrangement. And so when he, when he met his spiritual master, he, he sat and listened and he heard from him and he was very 
he realized, oh, here is someone who is real. Here is someone who's not cheating, who won't cheat me. And eventually, even though it took so long for him, he fulfilled to the max his spiritual master's desire to translate books in English and to go to the Western countries. So how, how elevated was Srila Prabhupada in the family? So this is the order of the transcendental system. Krishna's making arrangements as the transit. It's not any material arrangements that we can see. This is only known by Krishna. So Krishna makes all kinds of arrangements, you know, like we made arrangements for us to meet our spiritual master when we had the desire. So this is the transcendental system. And uh, even though, you know, the, we have devotees who may fall from the path, they, there's no loss, as it says in the Gita, there's no loss of diminution in this process. Whatever you've done is always in your bank account. And because Krishna goes with you in your heart and you were trying your previous life, he makes all kinds of arrangements. You know, he arranges for you to, to you know, come back to this process because he wants us to come back more than we want. He's making all different kinds of arrangements to bring us back home. So we should just surrender to Krishna. And I think I'll end the class here. If there are any questions or any comments, any corrections, I'm, I'm at your disposal. Thank you. Very thoughtful class. Thought provoking. Okay, and anyone has any questions or comments, you may unmute and ask. So my one question is, how can we avoid being the ones that fall away from the path? The only thing I can think of is hold tight to the feet of the spiritual master. Good. Um, and mm, for me, it's just to hold tight to the feet of my spiritual master. We've we have to have determination. We have to develop determination. We have to develop discipline. We have to take association of a higher nature. We have to hang around with the, the ones who are successful. Yes. That's the only way. I mean, I, my experience has been like, I've noticed that um, if you, you hang around with, with, you know, if you have association of someone who's not so serious, then you become influenced. So association is very important because sometimes, at least for me, we may not be strong enough to give that, that person anything. So we need to seek association of those persons who are reaching for the higher goal. And we can feel the influence and we feel enlivened. But in, we have to make ourselves strong by that association and, and be serious about um, keeping the vows. We made the vows. We made the vows in front of the spiritual master. We made the vows in front of the fire. We made the vows in front of the devotees. We made the vows in front of the deities. We have to, we can't have weakness of heart. We have to stick to what we promised. We promise, we made a vow that we will, we will follow this, keep these, these. And then I read, well, if we, if we do that, if we chant our rounds nicely, even if we have some difficulty, Krishna will protect us. Thank you.
Anyone else have anything to add or ask? All right. Thank you very much for the class. I really much enjoyed that class. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody who may be on the, on the, okay. A few here and a few on Facebook are there as well. I'm sorry? On Facebook. I said a few here and a few on Facebook. On okay. Facebook, very occasionally they ask a question, but mostly they just say Hare Krishna. And today it's all Hare Krishnas. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.